The previous four tutorials, the introduction, direct view navigation, basic drawing and transformations, have covered in some detail some of the basic operations of Form Z. This final tutorial, which is divided into nine segments, summarizes some of the most frequently used operations in Form Z. Note that they are not all inclusive, and for a complete discussion of all the tools, the online manual remains the ultimate source. The first segment of the overview begins with the primitives on the first row. These classical shapes can be generated quickly with a few clicks of the mouse. Here we start with a cube, then a cone, and now a cylinder, then a sphere, torus, plane paraboloid, and hyperbolic paraboloid. There are, of course, a variety of options to be set in the respective dialogues that allow you to apply different generation methods, to generate only portions of these forms, etc. All the details can be found in section 4.1 of the manual. On the right column of the first row are three tools that generate special types of balls. Start with the leftmost icon and draw the default shape as you drew the primitives. What is called a geodesic sphere is generated. With the tool active in the tool options palette, from the shape pop-up menu, select octahedron and draw again. Then select Soccer Ball and draw again. You observe the forms of the types of balls these options generate, and there are more you may want to try on your own. The second tool in the palette generates 3D stars. Select the icon and draw as before. With the tool active in the tool palette, from the base type pop-up menu, select icosahedron and slide the ray ratio bar to the left to about the 20% position. Then draw again and notice how the two stars differ. You can generate many more variations by using different settings. The third tool to the right generates what are known as metaballs that will not concern us here in this quick tutorial. If you are interested, you can read about them in the manual. We shall now take a look at the so-called derivative operations executed by the tools in the fifth row of the column. Draw a 2D rectangle. With the continuous copy modifier, which is the third icon in the 12th row, and the move tool, 13th row, with the two selected, click on the rectangle and copy it five times like we show here. Recall that you double click somewhere in the window to terminate the copying process when you were done with the copying. We'll use these shapes to apply a variety of operations. The first tool on the left is labeled Point Cloud. With it, click on the first, lower left rectangle. An object consisting of four points, the points are the original, is generated. These objects are point clouds and needless to say, they are more meaningful when a lot more complex objects are involved. With the second tool, labeled 2D Surface, click on the upper left rectangle. It looks like nothing happened. Move the rectangle using the Move tool. Make sure the self-copy modifier is back to the default self. When you move the rectangle, you see that there is another one behind it that is ghosted. The ghosted shape is the original one. The one you moved is the new shape generated or derived from the original. With all the derivative operations, the original objects may be ghosted, deleted, or kept as is. This is an option and a status of objects dialog that is invoked from buttons in the tool palettes. The default is ghosted, which is why the shape from which we derive other shapes here are being ghosted. With the third tool labeled 2D Enclosure, click on the upper middle rectangle and observe the result. Enclosure is a double line shape that corresponds to architectural walls. All the shapes we derived so far were 2D shapes. We shall next derive 3D objects. With the fourth tool labeled 3D Extrusion, click on the lower middle rectangle and observe the result. As we have already seen in a previous tutorial, the height of the object is determined by the value selected in the Heights menu. If you select Graphic Keyed from the Heights menu, then after you click on the shape you want to extrude, you will be given the opportunity to graphically set its height. 
With the fifth tool, labeled 3D Converged, click on the upper right rectangle. Because of the graphic keyed option we just selected, the shape doesn't automatically extrude. We must move the mouse forward and backward to dynamically define its height. Clicking a third time will extrude the pyramid or extrusion to a point. With the sixth tool, labeled 3D Enclosure, click on the lower right shape and dynamically extrude a 3D wall to the height you desire. You may want to display your objects in hidden line mode to be able to read them better. If you do, note how the point cloud object disappears. This is because it has no surfaces, which is what the hidden line mode displays. This concludes the first segment of the overview tutorial.